Mathematical functions. Excel 2013 offers a plethora of mathematical functions that you can use. Functions are used to create formulas. In this lesson, we're going to start talking about some of the more basic functions, as well as teaching you to use them. In this lesson, we will discuss the basic Excel functions, averages including mode, median and mean, the sumif function, the countif function, how to use multiple criteria in functions, and calculating area and value of shapes. Before we start to delve into mathematical functions in Excel 2013, let's start out by reviewing the very basic mathematical functions that you're probably already skilled at using. In this sheet here, we have sales data for a few months period. In the totals column that we'll add to the right here, we want to add the sum of sales for each employee. To do this, type in the cell equals sum and open brackets. Next, highlight the cells you wish to use to produce the sum. In this case, it's this entire row here. Now place the end bracket at the end of the formula and press enter. You can also click in the cell where you want to place the total, for example in this cell here, and then click on the formulas tab. You can click on the auto sum button. This is how your formula should look in the formula bar. Now press enter. You can do the same thing for the last row here. Once we're finished with the totals, we're going to add a new column called count. To enter the count function, type equals count, then open bracket inside this cell here. Then drag over the cells to include. We just want to include the data from the months, so not the total column. Enter the closing bracket and then press enter. To add this formula to the rest of the cells, first select the cell that has the formula. Click on the little handle at the bottom right of the cell, then drag it down to select the rest of the cells that you want to copy the same function to. Next, let's use a lowest sales column. We'll use the min function to find the lowest sales value for the selected data. First we enter in a heading. Now we use the min function. Once again, we want to copy this down to the rest of the cells by dragging it down here. Now let's add a column called highest sale and use the max formula. Have a look at our data now. For any of you math buffs out there, you should know that when we talk about averages in mathematics that there are three different terms, mode, median, and mean. Mode is the most frequently occurring value in a range. Median is the middlemost value in a range. And mean is the total of the values in the range divided by the number of values. The mean function in Excel is average. Let's add a new average sale column, and then use the average formula to find the average sale for each person. We can also find the mode and the median, because we have separate functions for those. You can drag down two sets of cells by using the same method. The SUMIF function will total the cells in a range that you've selected using the criteria that you specify. Using our worksheet, we want the total amount in sales for all sales that are greater than 11. You can use any comparison operator that you want in some if functions. We're just going to use greater than. First we click on a cell where we want the results to appear. Next we go to the formulas tab, click on the math and trig button, then scroll down until we see some if, and then click on it. You'll then see the function arguments dialog box. In the range field, highlight the range of cells that you want to evaluate. This is our sales for the employee Smith. In the criteria field, enter the criteria. Ours is greater than 11. 
You should know if you're writing the formula in the cell, you must use quotations around the criteria, but in this case we don't need to. We will look at the sum range field in a minute. For now, we just want to see the total sales of all sales that are greater than 11. Press OK. Here is the formula in the formula bar. Now let's look at the function arguments dialog box again. We can do this by clicking on the FX button here. Let's talk about the sum range field. The first range in this dialog box is the range is for the criteria. And the second range is for summing. This allows you to use one column or row as the criteria. Let's use another example to demonstrate the SUMIF function. Let's use this worksheet here. Using this example, we want to calculate the total number of oranges sold. To do this, select an empty cell. Go to the Formulas tab, click on Math and Trig and scroll down to SUMIF again. Enter the range you want to use for the criteria in the first range field. This will be the types of fruit. In the criteria, you enter your criteria. We want the sum of oranges sold, so type in the word oranges. In the sum range field, enter the range you want to use to produce the sum. In this case, it's the sold column. Now click OK. You can see the results in this cell here. The formula in the formula bar looks like this. The COUNTIF function works the much the same way as the SUMIF function, except that we're going to count instead of add. In addition, the COUNTIF function has only one range, the counting range. Using our worksheet again, we're going to count how many sales are over 11. So let's go back to this worksheet here. To do this, click on the cell where you want the results to appear. Go to the Formulas tab, click on the More Functions drop-down, click on Statistical, and then select count if. You'll then see this dialog box. Enter the range of cells you want to count. In this case, we're going to look at all sales. Now enter the criteria. In this case, it's going to be greater than 11. Then click OK. You can see our results here. We have 16 cells that are greater than 11, or 16 sales greater than 11. The average if function will give you the mean of the selected range of cells based on the criteria that you specify. Let's say we wanted to find the average of all sales over 11. To do this, we would first select the cell that we want the results to appear. Now go to the Formulas tab, click on the More Functions button, then Statistical again, then click on Average If. You'll then see this dialog box. Notice that this dialog box has two ranges just as SUMIF did. These two ranges will be used in the exact same way, except we're wanting to produce the mean instead of the sum. First, we're going to use a simple formula using average if. We're going to enter the range of cells. Then the criteria, which is greater than 11. Then click OK. You can see our result here. Now let's use both ranges in the dialog box. Using this worksheet, we want to figure out the average number of oranges sold. So we go to more functions, statistical, and then average if. First, we're going to enter the range to use for the criteria. This is the fruit column because we want to average the number of oranges. Next, we're going to enter our criteria. Our criteria is oranges again because we want to average the number of oranges that were sold. Then, we want to enter the range to be used to figure out the average. That range is the cells that contain the number of fruit sold. Then, click OK. You can see that the answer in the cell that we've selected. If you check it with a calculator, this is indeed the average number of oranges sold. We can also use multiple criteria with sum if, count if, and average if functions. We can also use multiple criteria with sum if, count if, and average if functions. We can use the data on the left here to fill in the data on the right. We can figure out the sum of oranges sold in January, for example. When you use a sum if, count if or average if function with multiple criteria, the function that you use will be a little different. Instead of sum if, you will use sum ifs. Notice the s on the end. The same holds true for count if, which becomes count ifs. Average if also becomes average ifs. Let's use the sum ifs function. 
Select the cell where you want those results to appear. Go to the Formulas tab, click on Math and Trig, and then find Some Ifs. Remember, it's the one with the S here. You'll then see this dialog box. First, we enter the range to produce the sum, which is the number sold. Now enter the criteria range. This is the cells with the months in them, since our first criteria is January. Since we want to figure out the results for the number of oranges sold in January. In the next field, we write the criteria, which is January. Now we enter our second criteria, which is the cells with the fruit in them. Our criteria for this one is then oranges. If we wanted, we could add more criteria ranges and criteria. But when we're finished, we can click on OK. We can see the sum entered in the cell for us. Our formula in the formula bar looks like this. As we've said before, Excel has a plethora of mathematical functions for you to use. That said, it should come as no shock to you that you can use Excel to calculate the area and volume. Let's add a new sheet and let's put two shapes on it by going to the Insert tab and then going to Shapes. Let's add a cylinder shape and a cube shape. Now let's enter in the volumes for these because they're both 3D shapes. Now for the cube, Now let's say we want to figure out the circumference of the circle shape. This is figured out by multiplying pi by the diameter. If you want, go to the formulas tab. Select the cell where you want the result to appear. Click on the math and trig button, then select pi. However, we're going to enter this one into a cell and write out the formula ourselves. In Excel, you can do both. You can use the built-in formulas or you can enter them yourself. Click OK to enter pi. Next, we enter in the operator for multiplication. Then we enter the value which contains a diameter or enter in the number ourselves. In this case, it's five inches. So we type in five, then press enter. You'll then see the answer here, which is the circumference. Let's put in a label so we know what that means. Now let's figure out the area of a circle. To figure out the area of the circle, we need to use the formula pi multiplied by radius and then squared. However, we also need to figure out the radius. The formula for radius is the diameter divided by two. So our formula for this will be equals pi, then we multiply it by the radius, which is half of the diameter, five divided by two. Then we do squared, which is the squared character and then the number two. We've put this in the wrong cell, so let's drag it to the right cell. As you can see, we have pi, followed by the operator for multiplication, which is the asterisk. Next, we have brackets. Inside the brackets, we have five divided by two, so we can produce the radius. Finally, we have the roof character and then two, which is squared. Now we've entered the label for that cell. Now let's figure out the area of the cylinder. The formula for the area of the cylinder is the area of the circle multiplied by the depth. Let's make sure that's correct. Now to do the area of the cylinder, we need the area of the circle, which we can get by clicking on this value here, and then multiplying it by the depth, which is 10. As you can see, we clicked on the cell to reference it instead of answering the number. Now let's move on to the square shape. We'll start by figuring out the area of the square. The area will be the width multiplied by the length. We're gonna use the product function for this. So to do this, we enter in the width and then a comma and then the length. Now let's figure out the volume of the cube. 
For this, the formula will be the width multiplied by the length multiplied by the depth. So we'll use the product again. The width, then the length, then the depth. As you can see, the volume of the cube has now been calculated.